it's Friday afternoon and I definitely need something to drink so join me in seeing how to make my favorite maple soy latte it's really okay to put this together you're going to need eight ounces of really strong coffee you could of course use regular coffee I go for espresso You'll also need one cup of some kind of nut milk. I'm going to go for a cup of the soy brand eggnog to keep it seasonal. You'll also need two to three tablespoons of real organic maple syrup, a pinch of ground cloves, a pinch of allspice, and a pinch of organic fresh ground nutmeg. As you can see, I'm going to use my espresso maker, and these are just all the parts and everything together. And of course, to make the espresso itself, I'm going to use eight ounces of water to do so. And then here you can see, just assembling everything together. And then just waiting for everything to brew. And you know what, there's something about watching coffee being made and smelling the fresh aroma of the beans that's just as awakening an experience to me as actually drinking the coffee. And I don't know about you all, but I love to smell coffee brewing. It is wonderful. And I find, especially with espresso, you have a really rich kind of earthy smell and I really enjoy it. So watching the espresso and then here we go. We are now going to be showing a little trick. Okay. So say you don't want to use the steamer on your espresso maker. All you have to do is take a mason jar and put one cup of milk. Now I use non-dairy plant-based products, but of course you could use cow's milk to do this. Add one cup to your mason jar and then you are going to heat it in the microwave. What this will do is to help you create like the foam that you would want on a latte, but of course at home, and you're not gonna pay the premium price to do so. And then I always opt for glass because we're zero waste and that's what we have on hand. So as you can see in the microwave, you're gonna microwave it for about two minutes, uh, sometimes two and a half minutes. Then you're gonna take it out, put a lid on it, shake it up. That's gonna create your foam for your latte and give you kind of the body of your drink. And then at the end here, you're going to just kind of put everything together, including your spices and of course your maple syrup. And for me, I decided to go for a little bit extra today. So I went with three tablespoons instead of two, but of course, do you, whatever works for you. I like to put my seasoning on at the end and let it sit for a few seconds so it can steep, but you know, like my husband, he puts his seasoning in first. So again, whatever works for you. And here we go with the maple syrup. Again, need a little bit extra because it's Friday, but that is the drink. It is super simple and will impress your guest this coming Thanksgiving. Now for a little chat. So friends, that is my favorite, favorite latte recipe for this time of year. It's full of all kinds of maple goodness. It's organic and it's really easy to serve in larger batches for friends and people coming over for the Thanksgiving holiday. And while I have you here and we have a great cup of coffee, I want to take a few minutes and talk with you about something that's been on my mind and something that I'm going to discuss with my daughter and husband before we go into the week of Thanksgiving here in the States. Now many of us are taught in school in the States the story of Thanksgiving, the idea that there were a group of Plymouth colonists who came to the New World for religious freedom, they settled in this cold and desolate corner of what became the Plymouth Colony in Massachusetts. And on this one grace-filled day, they broke bread and shared a meal with the Wampanoag tribe who, by intervention from God, were able to feed these people and everyone lived a happy life. Now, while parts of that story are true, we don't get to hear about what really happened afterwards. Yes, a wonderful meal was had. It was actually had over three days. And yes, the Wampanoag tribe did teach a lot of the Plymouth Colony members how they could better hunt and secure food and garden. And of course, they continued to break bread with them. But what story we don't hear is that within one generation, wars between both the settlers and native tribes of the area commenced. Most of these people that were once friends who lived with commonality, who fed one another and were nourished together, would become mortal enemies. And within three generations, nearly 90% of the native inhabitants of the Plymouth area were annihilated by militias from the British colonies. 
what does all this mean for Thanksgiving? Well, as we know, a lot of it was commercialized. And that we can thank to President Lincoln, who actually made it not only a national holiday, but embellished a little bit of the truth. It made it better and more palatable for children, which is why we celebrate all things in such a way that we do. And of course, we can thank you know the celebration with turkey, not because it was actually had at the first Thanksgiving, which it more than likely was not. It was actually attributed to one of our other founding fathers, Benjamin Franklin. But the reason I tell you this story is something a little bit deeper. People that had a commonality, people that could come together and be friends in this community, within five years became enemies. And you have to wonder what happened and taking out the religion and the politics and the gender roles and all these things that happen and still happen today, what ultimately comes down to is a lack of communication. People that have otherwise would have been empathetic and compassionate towards each other lost sight of what really happened on that three-day holiday. They no longer sought one another's companionship. They no longer could learn from one another. Their children no longer played together. They no longer saw each other as means to human compassion and condition, but as something to take advantage of and ultimately as a reward system based upon other people. And so I want to challenge you all to think about that. Not so much the tragedies of history or the over-commercialization of history, but to think about it like this. What could we really be giving our families this time of year? And while a great meal is wonderful, whether you eat a plant-based diet or whether you don't, whether you go away to family and have a huge meal or whether you stay at home and entertain for three or four of your closest and nearest and dearest. Consider this. What people really need the most this time of year is something that we rarely want to give them. Uninterrupted, intentional time. Time where we're not using social media, where we're not using our phones because we're afraid of the empty space between conversation, where we can't wait to get away from each other and the table, where we don't want to speak to one another or learn recipes from our elderly relatives. We just want to be sustained and move on to the next thing. And I really want you all to focus on something beyond that. Hug someone a little bit longer. Speak to each other a little bit kinder. Go into this holiday season with less presents to buy and more good cheer to give. To treat people nicer. To slow down. To let people in front of you in traffic to be a little bit easier on the bagger at the grocery store, to understand that things happen and if your mail is delivered a little bit later, it's okay. And all of this seems to start around the Thanksgiving holiday. Let's not think of Thanksgiving as the rest stop before we go shopping. Let's think of it as a time where we come together, where people were given that respite from the cold, where people were nourished, both their minds, their bodies, and their souls where people had more to give and more to receive because it was the spirit that mattered a little bit more. So I hope that you all will consider just slowing down and savoring life and being more intentional and loving your family just a little bit more. And if you have the time, just tell someone, I'm thankful for you. I'm thankful that I know you. I'm thankful to be in your life. And it doesn't give me anything more than just the satisfaction of just being in your presence. You would be surprised how many people go out their day and never hear one kind word. We'll let you be the first person to give them that kind word and let it start not just with Thanksgiving, but the rest of this season. We can all do better and it starts with each of us. And let us use the Thanksgiving story, the true story, as a means to do better and to be more empathetic and to be kinder and slower and more intentional in our lives. And not just because it affects our immediate family. We're going to do it because it affects everyone. And change starts within and it works through the rest of the world. We can be better and it can start today. And if not today, then certainly on Thanksgiving. So as we go into from my channel to your channel and my family to your family, I really want to wish you the best throughout this season and especially next week. As you break bread, look around the table and realize 
a lot went into that, but so much more could be had. And again, thank you all for watching and for listening to my little rant here. And I wish you all again the best. And remember, kindness is free. Give it out to everyone, especially on Thanksgiving, guys. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe and turn on those notifications and have a wonderful rest of your weekend. Thanks, guys.